Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. We're going to study the integumentary system and in this little video clip we'll focus on the skin. The skin consists of two major layers called the epidermis and the dermis. Now deeper to the dermis we also see something called the hypodermis, as you know hypo means below, or it can also be called the subcutaneous tissue or subcutaneous layer. This is a fatty layer um, and a layer that is very, very vascularized that, as you see, sits in between the dermis and the bone tissue and muscle tissue. This is what a slide looks like of the skin under low magnification and all of the darker pink colored layers together form the epidermis. So the much lighter colored layer that you see towards the bottom of this um, slide is the dermis. The reason why the epidermis has these different looking colors to it is because there are within the epidermis sublayers, which we will refer to as strata or singular stratum. Notice too that the connection between the dermis and the epidermis is not really just a flat surface. Instead, it is a very convoluted connection, increasing the surface area between the dermis, which is, as you know, very vascularized. It's made up of connective tissue and the epidermis, which is, of course, avascular because the epidermis is made up of stratified squamous epithelial tissue. Here we're looking at a diagram of just the epidermis. Uh, way near the bottom of the slide you see a more pinkish looking layer and that's the beginning of the dermis. But let's focus for a moment on the cells of the epidermis. And there are four cell types that we find there. But of these four cell types for lab, we will primarily uh, talk about the keratinocytes, which are basically the squamous cells of the stratified squamous epithelium that makes up the epidermis. The reason why we refer to the squamous cells in the epidermis as keratinocytes is because these squamous cells become very specialized in producing a protein called keratin. Now, please do not confuse that with the pigment that you find in carrots, for instance. That is called carotene spelled C-A-R-O-T-E-N-E. -E. You find that in bell peppers, etc. as well, any kind of orange to yellowish vegetables. The keratin in the epidermis is what makes our skin feel a little tougher, harder, and we find that the keratin, for instance, in our hair and our nails is even harder than that in our skin. There are other cell types that we find in the epidermis, but really we're not going to be able to identify those other cell types on a slide that we study in the lab. What we do see very clearly is that the shape of the keratinocytes begins to change the further away they get from the dermis. And this has to do with the fact that as they migrate towards the surface, as new cells are added to the basal layer, namely the layer that connects to the, der to the dermis, as the cells migrate towards the apical surface, the pressure that they experience causes them to flatten more and more. So before we take a closer look at the various strata of the epidermis, I wanted to show you a typical plaque that we study in the lab of the integumentary system. On the left hand side, or I would say the left third of this plaque represents uh, the scalp. I'm sorry, not the scalp, it's thick skin, so it would represent the sole of your feet or the palms of your hand. Notice how thick the epidermis is uh, showing um, in this left third. The middle third represents the axillary region. Notice that the epidermis is significantly thinner and there are other features uh, that indicate that this is more than likely the axillary area. 
and then towards the very right we have the scalp area um, again thin skin here we're looking at the plaque again and this time i have zoomed in to the epidermis and on the left hand side we see the epidermis of thick skin and on the right side we see epidermis of right of of, of uh, thin skin notice just as a side note that the plaque clearly shows that the dermis which sits just deep to layer e that the dermis is very vascularized it has it's made up of connective tissue as we'll see momentarily so the thick skin in our body such as the palms and the soles they have an extra layer that's why we see a b c d e labeled on the plaque on the other hand most of our skin is thin skin and then in those areas we miss layer b so let's take a closer look at all of this the epidermis is characterized by the sublayers called strata singular stratum the one closest to the dermis we've been referring to as the basal layer, but we can also refer to it as the stratum basale or the stratum germinativum. This is the layer in, we, in which we see the highest rate of mitotic divisions for obvious reasons because it's the layer that sits the closest to the vascularized connective tissue of the deeper connective of the deeper dermis. Superficial to the stratum basale, we see the stratum spinosum, or the spiny or prickly layer, which is called such because if you take a look at the cells, their shapes are such that they have kind of jagged uh, cell membranes. And this has to do with the fact that during preparation, the cells in this area lose fluid, but the desmosomes that interconnect the cells' membranes persist. And so in those little areas where the desmosomes are still present, um, we're going to see that little corners are formed in the cells or the cells, cell membranes, giving them that um, edgy or uh, prickly appearance. This layer consists of quite a few cell layers, and um, we see that the cells are not all too flattened yet. But when we get to the next layer called the stratum granulosum, notice that the cells have become very flattened due to, due to their age and their cell the, the pressure that they have been experiencing up to this point so the way to visualize this is that the cells in the basal layer are going to eventually migrate upwards as they are being pushed up by new cells that are being um, born or generated by means of mitotic divisions in the stratum basale. The stratum granulosum I often consider to be a landmark layer because in this, in this layer we see very clear little keratin granules um, that form the precursor to the mature protein we call keratin. So I often look for this layer first to, to then um, determine where the stratum spinosum is for instance. Although you can also use the stratum corneum, the most superficial layer, as your landmark, as in this case, or as in this layer, the cells are totally dead. What we really only see are um, leftover cell membranes, which still enclose all the keratin. And very often this layer has a very distinct look to it, as in the cells near the apical surface being very flaky looking, um, or they're, they're, they're peeling off, uh, very damaged looking. And also the color of this layer tends to often be a very light pink or a light gray. Clearly, you're not going to see any nuclei or other organelles in this layer anymore either. This is what a typical thin skin um, sample would look like, but in the case of thick skin, we would see an extra layer. For instance, here you see a diagram of a, uh, an area of thick skin, which could be the palm of your hand, for instance. And in thick skin, we see that in between the stratum granulosum and the stratum corneum, 
we have a often very light looking layer from there its name the stratum lucidum lucidum referring to very light lucid um, this layer is going to not be there all the way through out the the thick skin it tends to sort of appear and then get really thin to the point of disappearing and then reappear and when i say very light um, i mean a very light or bright pink this is a very tough layer for us to see at times you have to have a very very good slide in order uh, for you to identify this so i would make sure that if i were to present you with a, a picture or a slide of thick skin that you would very clearly see the stratum lucidum and again it sits in between the granulosum and the corneum let's come back now to our slide of the skin and here we more than likely have thick skin because of the thickness um, of the stratum corneum but I'm hoping you're starting to recognize where the epidermis is now remember that's all of the darker pink not just the very dark pink layer which is um, the area where the stratum granulosum is notice how well it stands out the very very light pink near the bottom of the picture is the dermis here then I have zoomed into the stratum granulosum um, which is the very dark area in the very center of your screen superficial to it the light gray layer is the stratum corneum and deeper to the stratum granulosum we see the stratum spinosum and here then we see a high magnification of the stratum granulosum it is very easy to see the granules in these keratinocytes so use this layer as your landmark layer let's take a closer look then at the dermis and the dermis is made up of two different kinds of connective tissue closest to the epidermis where the dermis is very convoluted to actually form these little nipple-like structures called the dermal papillae in that area right near the epidermis we have a very thin layer made up of areolar or connective tissue and we refer to that layer as the papillary layer from dermal papillae papilla means little nipple again that increases the surface area in between the epidermis and the dermis the biggest or the thickest layer of the dermis in which we find practically all of our accessory organs of the integumentary system is made up of dense irregular connective tissue and we refer to that layer as the reticular layer we find collagen fibers in here elastic fibers in here and reticular fibers along with with uh, definitely uh, the deeper sensory receptors as we will study in the next video clip so this wraps up our first little video clip of the integumentary system in the next video clip we'll take a closer look at the accessory structures